For centuries, humanity has gazed at the night sky, dreaming of distant worlds and the mysteries they hold. Among them, Mars has captured our imagination like no other. A barren red landscape, hostile yet full of potential a frontier waiting to be explored. In recent years, one visionary has risen to the challenge of turning this dream into reality, Elon Musk. Through his groundbreaking work at SpaceX, Musk has set his sights on Mars colonization, not as a far-off fantasy, but as a critical step for the survival and evolution of humanity. Let's begin our journey by asking the pivotal question, why we need a mission to Mars? The Mars venture, I think, is part of the expansion of consciousness beyond Earth. I mean, I want to be clear that I, I don't think we should apply some vast number of amount of resources to, to Mars. I, I'm talking about less than 1% of, of our economic output should go to making life multiplanetary. But it is a natural extension of, of expanding the scope of scale of consciousness. So I think we want to do everything we can to make sure that Earth is going to be great for a long time, as long as possible, and but also allocate a small amount of resources like I said, less than 1% of our economy to extending life beyond Earth and ultimately to other star systems. How expensive will it be to go to Mars? The costs are immense developing reusable rockets, life support systems, and sustaining human missions all demand vast resources and innovation. But the potential benefits technological breakthroughs, inspiring future generations, and securing humanity's future for outweigh the price. As Elon Musk puts it, the cost of staying confined to Earth might be even greater. Star systems. We can't get there with at some extraordinarily high cost. I mean, the current cost of, let's say, one ton to the surface of Mars is on the order of a billion dollars. Because you don't just need the rocket and the launch and everything. You need, like, heat shield. You need guidance system. You need uh, deep space communications. Uh, you need some kind of landing system. So, like, rough approximation would be a billion dollars per ton to the surface of Mars right now. This is obviously way too expensive to create that self-sustaining civilization. So we need to improve that by at least a factor of a thousand. A million per ton? Yes. Ideally, less than, much less than a million a ton. But if it's not, like, it's got to be, you have to say, like, what, well, how much society afford to spend or want to, want to spend on a self-sustaining city on Mars? The self-sustaining part is important. Like, it's just the the key threshold where the Great Filter will have been passed when the city on Mars can survive even if the spaceships from Earth stop coming for any reason. It doesn't matter what the reason is, but if they stop coming for any reason, will it die out or will it not? And if there's even one critical ingredient missing, then it still doesn't count. It's like, you know, if you're on a long sea voyage and you've got everything except vitamin C, and it's only a matter of time, you know, you're going to die. <laughs> so, so we're going to get Mars, a Mars city to the point where it's self-sustaining. I'm not sure this will really happen in my lifetime, but I, I hope to see it at least have a lot of momentum. And and then you can say, okay, what is the minimum tonnage necessary to have a self-sustaining city? And there's a lot of uncertainty about this. You could say like, I don't know, it's pr probably at least a million tons because you have to set up a lot of infrastructure on, on Mars. Like I said, you can't be missing any anything that in order to be self-sustaining, you can't be missing, like you need you know, semiconductor fabs, you need iron ore refineries, you, like you need all, lots of things, you know. And Mars is not super hospitable. It's, it's the least inhospitable planet, but it's definitely a fixer offer of a planet. How does Elon Musk plan to colonize Mars? The initial focus is on building sustainable habitats under protective domes or underground, using SpaceX's Starship to transport crews and supplies. These colonies would rely on solar power and use Martian resources to produce fuel, water, and food. Long term, Musk envisions terraforming Mars by releasing its co-reserves to warm the planet, though this remains speculative. His ultimate goal, a self-sufficient civilization on Mars, ensuring humanity's survival and paving the way for deeper space exploration. Well, at first, you would have to have a life support system because Mars has a low density atmosphere, only about 1% the density of Earth, and it's primarily CO2. Over time, you can terraform Mars. Terraform means make it like Earth, essentially. And if you warm Mars up, you will. there's a bunch of frozen CO2 that will evaporate, densify the atmosphere, and um, you'd actually want kind of global warming on Mars. Mars is about 50% further away from the Sun than the Earth, so it gets about less than half the solar energy that, that Earth does. It, it appears highly likely that Mars had liquid oceans, albeit a long time ago. And there, there's a lot of ice. So there's, there's Mar Mars is covered in ice. And now the ice is then covered in dust, for the mo mostly except at the poles. There's a lot of ice. In fact, I believe if, if Mars was warmed up, you'd have an ocean about a mile deep on 40% uh, of, of the planet. The evidence suggests that it is most likely that Mars had uh, liquid water 
Well, just over time, the solar system cooled. So Earth used to be much hot, like in the very early Earth was like molten rock, you know, so really almost nothing could survive in the beginning. We were just a ball of lava. We're still mostly a ball of lava. We're like creme brulee, like there's a thin crust <laughs> and it's mushy rock, under, super very hot mushy rock underneath. Now technically that, that rock is on, in a semi-solid state, but as soon as it gets to a low pressure, like pops out of the ocean, uh, you have a volcano obviously with lava. Surface ambient pressure, the, we're basically covered in liquid rock. What will a Mars base look like? How does Elon Musk envision the first human settlement on the red planet? According to Musk, the initial Mars base will be a small, sustainable outpost designed to support life in a harsh and unforgiving environment. The settlement would likely consist of pressurized habitats, built either under protective domes or underground, to shield inhabitants from radiation and extreme temperatures. A base. Base would have like the essentials of like food production, water, have ice mining droids that would like go mine ice and then melt it and purify the water. And then you need a propellant, kind of a propellant factory or a propellant plant. Mars's atmosphere is primarily CO2. And then if you take water, which is H2O, and you can turn CO2 and H2O into CH4 and O2, which is methane and, and, and oxygen. That's why Starship uses methane as a fuel. It's mostly oxygen, so it's like 78% oxygen, the propellant, and 22% fuel. You know, in space, there's, in a vacuum, you have, there's no oxygen to burn, so you, you've got to bring your own oxygen, and you mostly bring oxygen. You'd be, uh, you need a propellant plant to create the liquid oxygen, liquid methane, and food and water, and the basics, essentially. That would be the, to, the thing to start off with. You'd be living in kind of like glass domes and partially underground and stuff. So it would be hard living in the beginning on Mars. Not like a luxury situation. Who will be the first to go to Mars? Elon Musk has often emphasized that the initial missions to the Red Planet will be challenging and suited for pioneers who are ready to face significant risks. These first travelers will likely be highly trained scientists, engineers, and explorers with a strong background in problem solving and adaptability. First people that go to Mars are gonna be like dangerous, like you might die, food probably not good, it's going to be a long and difficult trip. It's probably like a lot of pain and danger. That's the ad. How will a rocket travel to Mars? And what will the journey look like? The trajectory will take advantage of a favorable alignment between Earth and Mars, a window that opens approximately every 26 months. During the voyage, the crew will face unique challenges, including microgravity, cosmic radiation, and the psychological effects of isolation. Starship is designed to mitigate these issues, providing living quarters, recreational areas, and robust shielding against radiation. The orbit of Mars, which is further away from the sun, is about two years, and Earth's one year, because Mars is about 50% further away from the Earth, from the sun than the Earth is. So it's like Mars, we're, Earth is at one astronomical unit, Mars is like one and a half-ish. We're about eight light minutes away from the sun, Mars is about 12. When you want to go to Mars, you basically accelerate in the, along the same path of, of Earth, going around the, the sun, and you time it such that your acceleration gives you an elliptical orbit around the sun, where the tip of the ellipse intersects with Mars. So Mars is going around, you go, and you just time it to coincide with the tip of your ellipse being Mars. That turns out to be about a six month journey. Now you can speed that up. I think, uh, I mean, I could sort of see a way to get make it happen in say three months where the intersection with Mars would not be at the tip of the ellipse, but on the edge of the ellipse. Now that would mean the tip of the ellipse is out near Jupiter. So if you miss Mars, you're gonna end up at Jupiter, Jupiter's orbit. Earth and Mars are only in the same uh, sort of, there's only about a six month period every two years when uh, Earth and Mars are aligned such that you can do the transfer. You, know, you can totally imagine that if Mars is on the other side of the sun, you can't get there because it's got to go through the sun. You got to time it. This is like about a quarter of every Mars year is when you can do the transfer. So one, six months every two years. So if we are able to build, or if humanity is able to build a city on Mars, people will probably remember, you know, which planetary conjunction they came on. It's not like you just go all the time. You can only go every two years. Well, I think it's going to take a while to build a real civilization. The, the real, th the real, the threshold that really matters is for getting past the Great Filter. Do we have enough resources on Mars such that if the spaceships from Earth stop coming, you can survive. Yeah. Now, you can only be just missing one little thing. You'd be like, you're on a long sea voyage, and the only thing you're missing is vitamin C. you got to have uh, all the things necessary to sustain civilization on Mars. And the reason that those shifts from Earth stop coming could be World War Three, or it could be due to a slow decline of civilization. So civilization here on Earth could end with a bang or a whimper. What are the reasons to want to go to Mars? 
why dedicate so much effort, innovation, and resources to reach a barren, cold, and distant planet. Elon Musk sees it as much more than an adventure. He believes it's a necessity. And I think I think there's two reasons. One is kind of a defensive reason that like if something bad were to happen to Earth, you know, it could be like a meteor, or like whatever destroyed the dinosaurs, super volcanoes, could be World War Three. Like we could just like nuke each other to death yeah. or something. Like I don't know, World War Three is like seeming a little more probable these days. It might be the leading factor. So it could be either some natural disaster or some or something where humanity just like suicides itself with a, with a World War Three situation. And then it would be you know good to have a second planet where so, so that like you know civilization isn't wiped out. So that's the kind of the de defensive reason. It's like life insurance for life collectively. And so, you know, not just for humans, but all, all, all like the creatures that we love. For long term, we could make it look like Earth. Like, we have to warm it up, but there's a lot of a lot of ice on Mars. It's like cold. So like you just have to warm it up to have liquid water. Mars would have um, an ocean, of, I think about a roughly maybe a mile deep uh, on 40 percent of the planet. Roughly. Yeah, so if you put it warming up. In fact, a lot of the ice that you see on Mars like at the poles is actually dry ice. It's a CO2, frozen CO2. Well, you could use like solar reflectors or you could just create artificial suns with a, a series of thermonuclear explosions. Like this, the sun is like a, a giant. You'd create a sun? Thermonuclear reactor. It is, it's a, like if you want to, if, if you're worried about like, well, will that generate like dangerous radiation? We'll have you stood in front of the sun if you just go out in the sun. The mm. sun is giant thermonuclear reactor. Yeah, you'd have to do kind of like a series of, like, if you, if you like launched a, like a missile every 10 seconds and then so like fireworks but real big so a nuclear firework couldn't have a sustained reaction the, the sun is a gravitationally contained thermonuclear reactor so you need a lot of gravity the sun is well over 90 percent well over 99 percent of all the mass of the solar system is very big 